Hello, hello, everybody. This is Jeanne-Marie Pinel here for another Montessori Q&A. Uh, happy to be here. And I want to just give a special thanks for those of you that are here and that send me words of encouragement to show up every week and to share some Montessori principles and ideas with you. So thank you for being here. And um, I do, I did prepare a little link, a uh, special gift for you that I will post uh, below once I'm done. And uh, it's something that I've prepared to accompany this talk so that you have something to work with. And today I wanted to specifically talk about the Montessori nursery. So I know some of you, you know, might be expecting and congratulations if you are uh, might already have a little newborn or are planning on one um, and or maybe grandparents soon to be grandparents and such so this is really for all of you who are going to be uh, dealing with newborns in the near future or already are dealing with newborns and so just wanted to give you really the idea behind what we call the Montessori nursery and also more in, most importantly is this whole notion of preparing the environment for our children <clears throat> and this is a big tenant of the Montessori principles is how to really prepare an environment where our children will succeed where our children will be able to get acquainted with the place that they've been born in. And so one of the big principles here is about um, really for you to understand the importance of the simplicity around it, the importance of really minimizing what we get. So if you Google you know, uh, a Montessori, uh, not, not a Montessori, if you Google uh, a nursery checklist or, you know, the ideal registry and everything, you will get uh, bombarded with so many items that in all honesty, you will probably never use. That are, a lot of them are kind of gimmicks and gadgets and things like that. So. I just want to give you the permission to really minimize what you will be putting on that registry or what you will be gifting to anybody who is expecting or to yourself. So the principles, excuse me, <clears throat> like I said, the principles are, are really about the simplicity. <coughs> our children, our newborns, they have been in a very, very, very simple cocoon that is, hello Susie from sunny South Florida. Wonderful, nice to have you here. Um, I was just in Florida a few weeks ago for a home consultation, so beautiful place. Good to have you here. And yes, please let me know when you jump in and when you watch this on the replay, where you are watching this from. I just get so excited about how international and global the Montessori community is and the community of mindful parents who are interested in all of this. So as I was saying, I the topic this week is the Montessori nursery. And the idea behind the fact that we want to really keep things simple is that children are have so much to take in from the moment they are born. They have been living for nine months in, in, in kind of a subdued lighting, subdued sounds and all of that. And so when they are born, let's ease that transition. And also for you, those first two weeks, for example, are really a period of transition my my you know top priority for newborns and newborn parents and especially you the mom is to just stay in bed those first two weeks really cuddle and all you have to do is is be close to your infant and and feed them 
and nourish yourself with good foods and hydrate yourself and, and take good, good care of yourself and your newborn. And that is really the only priority you have. So right there, you don't need much things, right? You have your, your skin, your love, and uh, your food. If you are breastfeeding, if you're not, then we, we, we bottle feed and that is fine, but you still can take it really easy. So the principles are that we are creating for them uh, points of reference. And what I mean by this are we are going to start from the beginning giving them uh, this notion of where things happen for them. So the four basic areas that we want to consider in the nursery and, and you know, possibly the home because um, we might not have a dedicated room for them and such, but it's really about giving them the opportunity to figure out where things happen. And we call these points of reference. So the first one is sleeping. Where do I sleep? Preferably in the Montessori nursery, it is a simple floor bed. That is a mattress that is put on the floor or a very nice little wooden frame with a low, low bed. And this, um, I will talk a little bit more about it, but it's really this idea of giving them the uh, visual uh, you know, that, that they can see all around, they're not behind bars, which a crib often is, and they will have the freedom of movement once they are moving. So at the very beginning, I know that we, uh, you know, it's, it's much easier to have our baby close to us, so in a bassinet next to us or such, but during the day, put that bassinet on the floor bed so that they get used to where they're sleeping. So that's one very important aspect of the Montessori nursery is this idea of the floor bed. You don't need to buy a crib. So that's already a big expense that um, will, will not be needed. So the sleeping area. The uh, other area is the personal care or the uh, you know care of the person. So at the beginning, it's going to be the adult caring for the child. Here, what I highly recommend is a very simple <clears throat> area where, and this you get to decide whether you want to be standing or sitting or maybe sitting on the floor to uh, have these moments with your children where you are dressing them, changing them, <clears throat> and also also bathing them. In, in, in an ideal world, if you can, this area is in the bathroom because then right from the beginning, they have this uh, toilet awareness. They know that you know self-care happens in the bathroom and such. Not all bathrooms are equipped with large countertops to be able to do that and such. So just find an area that is going to be comfortable for you, the adult at first, where you have everything at arm's reach and you can be facing forward. This is for me a very important aspect of the, the respect that we give to the child when we are caring for them. We want to be really facing forward and being able to give them uh, equal, uh, you know, equal pressure on both sides of the body. Oftentimes nowadays, the uh, changing tables are done sideways, so they're kind of, you know, uh, sideways and such. And, and so this is something, and it's basically you just change your orientation or you change the orientation of, of the area. So something to keep in mind. Uh, the third area is that of feeding. So at first, feeding, if you are breastfeeding or bottle feeding, is going to be you, right? It's going to be either mom or dad or a caregiver. Here, what is nice is to have an area where you, the caregiver, can get really comfortable and can just relax because at the beginning, we are feeding them quite a bit. So make this a moment of pleasure. Make this a moment where you get to relax in the best world possible, please avoid any distractions. This is actually a moment that is really 
special for our little one, where they are connected to you, where they have this sense of, of love and security, and we want to be able to really give them that. And I know, you know, some of you are probably thinking, oh my gosh, but you know, this happens like 24 hours seven. It does at the beginning, but take this as a moment for you to rest. Really, the, the, the you know, the everything that is a distraction can can wait um but you know also i know the real world and that that's not always possible but just make this space uh, a a comfortable place for you as well where you can really connect with your child and then the last area is that of movement movement being where the child is going to be awake so here is something that please um, pay attention is that oftentimes when we search for Montessori nurseries and such, we see the floor bed with a mirror next to it. And that is a big no-no. The mirror is for awake time. The mirror is something that stimulates the child. The mirror, the low mirror, up against the wall with a mat for the movement area is an awake time. So it can be in the same room, but just not next to the bed. Preferably, I prefer that it is in the family area where everybody is because that's when the child is awake. And this is where you're gonna keep it super simple, where the child is going to have maybe some mobiles as the one, whoops, the one you see right, right there, that is the Gobi mobile that is like the third mobile um very simple uh toys and such so again super simple so let me know if um you know if you have heard about this and and you know susie i see you're still here if you've uh heard about this and uh what your questions are and how old are your children and have you heard about the montessori floor bed have you used the Montessori floor bed? I would love to hear uh, about this. And know also that I have prepared for you the Montessori nursery checklist. So on there, you will find um, kind of my little ideal uh, shopping list and I have kept it super simple. Uh, there's the floor bed, there's a forward facing um, changing table the Montessori mobiles and then I also have some of the I explain some of the different mobiles the the sequence and also um, I have a DIY for a low shelf because that's also something that we're going to want to either purchase or make and it's really very basic it's a, it's a low shelf where you're just going to put just a few toys nothing major and one thing I will say, and, and I think you'll thank me for this, is avoid any battery-operated noise-making toys. They do not need that, especially at the beginning, and uh, it gets to be really annoying for you, the adult. So no need for that. And, and in all honesty, I try to avoid any plastic, so I really want to do uh, wood and everything and on my little checklist I also um, have a um, a link to Monty Kids which is a uh, subscription service that sends you toys every three months just what you need uh, you can send them back you can donate them you can keep them for friends or, or such wonderful wonderful uh, service and then I've also linked some of my favorite uh, little Etsy shops and, um, and such. So that is really what I have for you and I will link that. And then today I also wanted to show you what I think is an essential for uh, the Montessori nursery and for really any family, whether they know anything about Montessori or not. And it is this, it is the Tompancino. So I received this Tompancino from the Tompancino company that is uh, new, they're here in the States. And basically what it is, it's a little, um, very uh, thin little pillow, but that you will be able to uh, place the newborn on 
And what is beautiful about this, first of all, it's super soft and really nice, but what is lovely about this is that the newborn will be in its own warmth and its own smell, and it's really a nice way to be able to carry them, and especially for all of those guests that want to hold baby, you hand over the entire little package. Baby is not interrupted, it doesn't have to adjust to different uh, smells to different uh, temperatures and such and so this to me is an essential it's it's beautiful wonderful gift um, I will put the link in there or you can find all of that on my website under favorite products uh, I have it there as well so really um, as I say keep things simple no need to to you know buy all of those things your arms you have the food if you're breastfeeding and that is about all that um that you need susie i am a montessori teacher and i learned many new things from your video oh thank you good i'm glad they're helpful and you know share these also all of you share these if you know of anybody who is expecting or who's just had a, a newborn or grandparents because to me I think it's information that isn't shared enough you know we get bombarded with marketing of the latest greatest um, toys and such the other day oh my goodness a uh, 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 Montessori colleague shared with me one of these new contraptions of for for you know sleeping babies of oh it was I, I don't even want to go into it it was it was just terrible when all you need really is a tappuccino right you put your newborn there they're there you have your arms you have your love um, and such so super simple the Montessori floor bed also is just a wonderful way to let them adapt so a little bit more on the Montessori floor bed because I think this is a topic that is uh, you know, asked about a lot. I have an article on my blog as well if you um, search the floor bed. But it's really the idea is that, you know, the, the crib is kind of a 19th century invention contraption to keep, really to not to keep the child safe because, you know, where are they going, but more to, to, to appease us in a way. And yes, you know, when we do the floor bed, we definitely have to make sure that the entire room is safe. So that is definitely a word of caution. But the idea behind the floor bed is that the child will learn on their own where sleep happens and that they will be able when they are mobile to go to their bed when they are tired and when they are done they can get up they don't need to cry for help to you know get me out or they don't need to wait for you to understand their cues whether they're tired and such and I know this sounds kind of like magical and all this but it really does happen um, you, my son for example when he was a uh, younger um, young toddler he he's still a great sleeper and and he was after lunch when you know the digestive system starts happening and you kind of get tired he would just walk over and lie down on his bed and take a nap so it, it is about trusting the child and about really making these routines super simple so that children can learn to um, be self-sufficient and, and all of that. So the Montessori floor bed is really a nice one. And also um, there is a new company, Sprout Kids, that does a beautiful uh, floor bed. And um, that is also in my favorite products on my website. But uh, check out the free download that I created for you, the Montessori nursery checklist. On there you will have all of that information and uh, direct links to all of that. And that is voilamontessori.com. So voila Montessori, that's right there by my name, slash Montessori dash nursery. And that's what I've prepared for you. So I hope that that uh, is helpful. And let me know if you have any questions. <clears throat> I will be back here next Wednesday. Uh, and also I'm, I'm here. So if you post any questions below, I will answer them. 
check out the um, free download that I've prepared for you. And um, I will be back next week for more of the Montessori wisdom. Alrighty, bye-bye for now.